Don't See, you? my integral doesn't always say start where my function starts and end where my function ends. This actually says start here and there, just like we did over here. Start here and here. So basically, we have a quarter of a circle. We have a quarter of a circle with what type of a radius? How much is the radius here? Can you find the area of a circle? Every circle, what's the formula for every circle? Come on now. Pi r squared. What? Y times one fourth. This would be the whole circle. We're taking a fourth of it. So this is basically a quarter circle with a radius of one. Which is interesting, right? Without even having to calculate these integrals, we're able to find some of those areas. We're able to do them. We didn't do anything about those integrals. But the idea is, what you're doing is finding areas. There's a geometrical approach to it. If you can do the basic geometry, you can do some of these integrals. Now, of course, do we always have basic geometry to do? Yes. You would like to hope so. Yeah, I was have my fingers crossed. <laughs> now, but if I give you something like uh, x cubed, uh, there's no basic geometry with that. Uh, the, x squared, there's no basic geometry with that. So we do have to have a better way. And we had the, the Riemann sums, or those, those limits of summations. We did those. That was one way. What we're going to do now is think about maybe a better way to do that, a faster way to do that. There is no better way. It's the same way. It's just there's shortcuts about that. Just like how <coughs> with derivatives, I gave you limits first, and then I gave you a quick and dirty way to do it. Actually, quick and clean. It was kind of nice. Pretty cool. Do you feel okay with this uh, area approach to begin with? Can you always do it? No. But you, you're going to practice some of this on your homework. Be able to break up a rectangle, a rectangle and a triangle, some circle ideas. Now, before we do go further, I have to give you some properties, things we can and can't do with these integrals. So properties, number one property. Okay, think through this. Think, th think about this. Yeah, exactly. What's the area? Remember, an integral is an area. An integral is an area. What's the area? There is one. Why? Because it's the same point. point. What's the area under a single point? There's zero. The width would be zero. The height, it doesn't matter. Zero times anything is zero. So whenever your bound goes from one number to another, and it's the same number, that's going to be zero. No matter what the function is, that's zero. This is the area under a point, basically. which is why that doesn't work. Okay, second property. This is kind of an interesting one. I, I get evil looks from people on this one. The interval's backwards. <clears throat> That's exactly right, which means this in terms of integrals. If your integral is written backwards, like what I mean, the bounds are backwards, see how we start at B and go to A here? That would be like starting at 1 and going to 0. What that's basically saying is, the, if the integral is written backwards, it's talking about the area that's under the x-axis. Uh, this, is, this is this definition. It says that in order to get this written properly so that you can do the integral, this is negative A to B. Well, it's negative integral from A to B. And yeah, they, they really should. <laughs> It'd be a lot simpler. But that's the definition. Do you feel okay with that so far? Now, typically, our integrals are given to us in, in this fashion, where we start smaller number, we end bigger number. So this 
We don't use it a whole lot, but it is there for you. It's something we can do. You all right with that one? Okay, third property. <coughs> Just like before, even with definite integrals, you can always pull a constant outside of your integral. So if we have c times f of x, where c is a constant, this is the same thing as c times that integral. <coughs> Also, just like before, this also works with definite integrals. If you have any sort of functions in terms of x being added or subtracted, any functions whatsoever, you can split those things up by addition and subtraction. As long as you don't change your bounds of integration, basically just says, hey, integral from a to b of f of x plus g of x or f of x minus g of x, Split it up. We've already done this several times with indefinite. I'm just telling you now this also works with definite integrals, which is what we're talking about here. Also, don't forget your, your dx. That's got to go with both of those integrals. Okay, by a show of hands, how many of you feel okay with the properties you've talked about so far? There's one more I got to give you. I just want to make sure you're okay on this as we as we are here. So area under a point A has got to be zero. This says basically, well, my integral is written backwards. It represents a function that's actually below the x-axis. We're just writing it backwards, uh, so we can make it negative and reverse our our bounds of integration. That's great. We can still pull constants outside of our integral. That's still appropriate. We can still separate integrals by addition and subtraction, not multiplication and division, unless we have that constant. But addition subtraction, absolutely, just like derivatives did. Now, the last one is interesting. It's, it's just for definite integrals. This doesn't work for indefinite, and you're going to see why in a second. But here's what we'll say. <coughs> now, I'll give it to you with the picture first and then write it out. Let's suppose that we had... Some function, so easy, and there's some number between A and B, basically like some, some number C. Would you agree that the total area of this figure from A to B is written like that, if this is f of x? then this is the total area of, of that whole figure. Would you also agree that the area of this whole figure could be written as the area of this plus the area of this? That's also a true statement. It says, if you find some number C that's between your bounds of integration, then this is the same thing as A to C. And then from, from where to where? C to C. Very good. That's another way that you can split up an integral. Find the area of just piece by piece. You can do that as well. As long as this number is between A and B, and they match right up to it. So you start at, you end at C, and then you start right again at C. Also, I don't know if I'll call this a property, but I'll, I'll list it anyway. Yeah, you actually could do it in reverse. This, these are not one way. I'm not going to write it twice. You need to know that if this is the case, you could write one integral out of that. For sure. Absolutely. That if you have integral from A to C and then C to B and it's the same exact function, match together. That works just fine. Okay with that? All right. Now, last up. This one is kind of a common sense thought, but, but think about this. If f of x is greater than or equal to zero, what's that mean? In terms of a graph, what's that mean? Positive. Positive. That's above or below the x-axis. So if the function is 
always above the x-axis. The function is always above the x-axis for every x on a certain interval. That right there says x is an element of a, b. It just says x is within that, okay? So if you're confused on the not notation, it says for all x's that happen to be in my interval. In English, that's what it says. For all x's that happen to be or are an element of the interval. You okay with the notation on that? If this is true for everything, you mean you plug in any x and it's always positive, it's always above the x-axis, tell me something about the area under the curve on a, b. It's got to be positive. That's what this says. If f of x is greater than or equal to 0 for all these x's, then the integral from a to b of f of x dx must also be positive or equal to 0. Does that make sense to you? Can you think through the, the, uh, the logic on that, the critical thinking on that one? If your function's always up here, and you can actually take an area of it, then, well, the area is going to be positive because it's always above the x-axis. You don't have that net signed area, which this represents, that's actually below. You don't have anything that takes away from it. It's always above. You follow? Same thing is in reverse. I'll just state it out for you. If f of x is less than or equal to 0 for all x in a, b, then the integral from a to b of f of x dx is less than or equal to 0. So it's kind of the same statement. Basically. <laughs> Those are really all the six properties you have. Area could be zero if the numbers are exactly the same. Our bounds are the same, it's area and the point, no problem. We can flip bounds of integration by making our integral negative. That's possible. We can pull out constants. We can separate by addition subtraction, definitely not multiplication. We can also break up an integral if it is to our benefit, or put one together if it's to our benefit, provided our functions are the same, and there's a number between there that we can split up. That's okay. Also. This is just kind of a statement, but it is truth. Uh, if the function is always above the x-axis, the area is going to be positive. If the function is always below the x-axis, the area is going to be negative. That's the idea. How many people feel okay with our properties is just fine? Cool. Let's try one more geometrically, and then I will go on into how to actually calculate these definite integrals. Trust me, it's, it's not hard. All right? If you know how to do indefinite integrals, you're almost set. Just one more thing. So last little example here. Let's use some of these properties and what we know about the, uh, the area approach to these integrals and find the area of this thing. There we go. Now that looks kind of nasty. In fact, you probably wouldn't even be able to take the integral of that if you didn't think about the area here. Because when you look at that, you're thinking, well, substitution, can I even do that with a definite integral, first of all, because we haven't talked about it. Is that even possible? Will be. But secondly, even if I did a substitution, the substitution is, doesn't really work out that well for us, at least not exactly. So that might not even work. So we have to kind of think about the geometry in, in this particular part of it. Using some of these properties, tell me something I could do. Definitely, definitely separate, separate, separate. Or can you just 